Hello, welcome to Vedil Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see about aspartam, a small dipeptide derivative which is used as a sugar substitute and uh, use that as an example in understanding peptide nomenclature. This particular question is taken from JE Advanced 2024 question paper. So, let us see the question. The question is aspartame, an artificial sweetener is the dipeptide aspartylphenylalanine methyl ester. The structure of aspartame is, so the aspartame structure is given, phenylalanine structure is given and then four options are given which we are expected to find out which among these is the structure. So, now let us see uh, the nomenclature of peptides. So, when we say a peptide, a peptide is uh, nothing but um, a compound of two amino acids or two or more amino acids. So, the simplest of all peptides is a dipeptide wherein one amino acid combines with another amino acid to form an amide bond. The amide bond is called as a peptide bond. And uh, we, uh, we will see some of the basic uh, um, nomenclatures of writing a peptide name and also writing a peptide structure. So, when we look at this particular uh, structure, we can see that uh, uh, the amino acid which is having a free amino group is written on the left hand side and uh, the amino acid that has a free carboxyl group is written on the right hand side. And this is the convention, IUPAC convention of representing a peptide. In this particular peptide, we see um, there are two, uh, three amide bonds. So, every amide bond means, so the one, two and three. So, every amide bonds means that uh, two peptides, sorry, two amino acids have come together. So, in this particular case, we see that R1, R2, R3, R4. So, there are four amino acids uh, which are combined by three peptide bonds. And so, the amino acid that is there at the extreme end is called as the N-terminal amino acid. The amino acid that is there at the extreme end of the right side is called as the C-terminal amino acids. So, now when we give the name for these amino acids, the naming convention starts from the amino end that is the N-terminal end. And uh, Every amino acids uh, last, uh, so le let us say for example, alanine. So, I-N-E is replaced Y, Y-L as a suffix. So, in this particular example that we have taken, alanine and serine has combined to form a, a peptide bond or a dipeptide. Two amino acids combine. So, it is called as a dipeptide. And um, the nomenclature or naming convention uh, is written like, Alanyl serine where because uh, the N terminal amino acid is connected by the acyl linkage uh, to the amine and so it, uh, it ends with YL and the final C terminal amino acid is written name is written in full. So, this is the complete way we write the uh, um, uh, dipeptide structure, but uh, when we represent it uh, by an um, you know notation we just use the three letter abbreviations connecting the names of the amino acids uh, but when we write the nomenclature this is how alanine serine is the way we write the nomenclature so this is another representation for us to understand um, in a better way of uh, this naming suppose uh, the amino acid is the n terminal amino acid is serine and uh, the c terminal is alanine then the dipeptide itself is a different dipeptide. So, these two pep dipeptides are entirely different ones. So, this dipeptide has the serine has the N terminal end and alanine has the C terminal end. So, the nomenclature is serial alanine. So, this is how the peptide nomenclature is followed uh, as per the IUPAC or uh, in nomenclature or International Union of Biochemistry nomenclature. So, now let us go back to our question. So, in this question, the name is given already, but uh, they are asking us to identify the structure of the peptide that is being given here. So, now the uh, basic things that we must keep in mind is about this aspartic acid. Aspartic acid is a dicarboxylic acid. So, you have one carboxylic acid here, another carboxylic acid here. 
and further all naturally occurring amino acids are called as alpha amino acids in the sense um, the amino group uh, where the carbon is bonded and uh, the uh, amino group uh, where the carboxylic group is there uh, we notice that this uh, particular group the amino group uh, is a chiral carbon and uh, these amino acids are alpha amino acids we know that they are alpha amino acids because uh, the both the functional groups are on the alpha carbon but in case of aspartic acid the next carboxylic acid group is in the beta carbon so this is having two carboxylic acid groups but then when aspartic acid is forming a peptide bond with any other amino acid it is the alpha acid that is undergoing reaction to form the amide bond or the peptide bond the beta acid do not involve in protein chemistry or uh, peptide bond formation it is actually a derivative basically it is the alpha amino acid linkage that we see in all our nomenclatures so now let us see uh, the basic entity so we see here this portion is the alpha amino acid so this is the side chain similarly in case of phenylalanine um, we, we see here it is phenylalanine methyl ester so it means the C terminal of phenylalanine is converted into a methyl ester in the sense the carboxylic acid of phenylalanine is converted into methyl ester so uh, from the name itself you know there is a phenyl group so there is a phenyl group so this is phenylalanine the nomenclature is already given so how do we identify the respective amino acids in the given structure so i will point out uh, in blue the aspartic acid residues so if you see the aspartic acid residues that are pointed out here in all these cases you, you see the aspartic acid should be a alpha aspartic acid so alpha amino acid so in the sense so this is the alpha carbon i will earmark the alpha carbons so that we can recognize how the reaction has happened so in all these cases what we see is in case of uh, structure c and structure d uh, we uh, in in the option c and d uh, the aspartic acid is given as the sec uh, sorry in option c the aspartic acid is given as the second acid but then uh, by nomenclature we know aspartyl is the uh, n terminal acid and not the c terminal so option c is ruled out so option c cannot be the um, structure of aspartyl and now coming to the other options so in all other three options we see that uh, aspartic acid is uh, returned first or in terms assign, uh, amino part of the aspartic acid is free so it is the n terminal now the next point to look for is whether the amide bond is formed at the using the alpha carboxylic acid or the beta carboxylic acid so in structure a we see the amide bond you uh, we see here this is the carbon so the alpha carboxylic acid is unreacted it is the beta carboxylic acid that has been reacted upon so it is very clear that structure a cannot be the answer now going over to structure d so in case of structure d also we see uh, the bonding is right the amide bond is with the alpha carbonyl group but then the beta carboxylic acid group has been converted into a methyl ester but it is the phenylalanine that is converted into methyl ester and not the aspartic acid so d option is also wrong so obviously b must be the right answer so uh, so we know that in this case uh, the beta carboxylic acid is free and then the amide bond is formed with the alpha carboxylic acid group now let us see uh, whether uh, we have uh, found the right answer so i am again marking out the methoxy ester so or the meth uh, sorry the methyl ester of phenylalanine so c cannot be looked at at all and d's methyl ester is wrong so the only possibility is these two structures and we know from our earlier um, statement itself that uh, a is ruled out though the methyl ester is the same in both the case aspartic acid is entirely different 
So the correct answer is B. So in this particular question, we find that um, the protein nomenclature is written in such a way that the amino acid at the end terminal end is written first and then uh, the chain is continued till uh, the C terminal amino acid is written in a complete form while the other amino acids that are part of the chain have a YL as a, uh, 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 as a replacement for the INE of the amino acid. And then uh, we also found that uh, the esterification uh, or any other derivatization is also included in the nomenclature. So in case of aspartylphenylalanine, structure B is the correct answer because only in this case we see that aspartyl group has its beta carboxylic acid free and then uh, the phenylalanine's carboxylic end is converted into a methyl ester. So, in this particular question, option B is the correct answer. Another uh, important thing that usually comes to our mind about aspartame is whether it is good or bad. So, there is a lot of uh, information available. Um, if um, the WHO has given uh, declarations, uh, FSSAI has given declarations on um, the choice of using artificial sweeteners. So, um, it is always best to avoid because these are all food additives and so it is best to avoid artificial sweeteners and uh, avoid uh, food additives uh, so that if there are people who have uh, complications associated with their use, uh, they could uh, uh, be uh, safe from these and also these sweeteners, artificial sweeteners. Uh, have been tested to know that uh, they do not contribute to or favor weight loss or they do not uh, uh, act as an effective uh, substitute for sugars. So, the choice is yours. Read about them to make a conscious decision of what suits you. Thank you.